Hello, and welcome to Airlines 101 with Laura. Uh, lately, I've been teaching some weight and balance to students and noticed that, well, there's a lot of great videos about percent Mac and the theory behind mean aerodynamic chords. There's really not a lot of good information on YouTube about how to do some actual calculations like we have for students to perform some weight and balance calculations for larger aircraft. So I wanted to go through a couple examples for you so that you can use the basic concepts of percent Mac and leading edge of mean aerodynamic chord and CG locations and apply that in uh, more broad terms as far as doing the actual math for these types of problems that you might see in test uh, FAA knowledge tests or other tests. So for the first example, I'm uh, going to show that I've got here a rectangle drawn and that's going to be my theoretical wing. So I just draw a rectangle because our swept wing, we can't really easily calculate a weight and balance location. So in the whole theory behind the percent Mac uh, type of calculations, we use a theoretical rectangular wing. So that's what's shown here. In this problem, we've been given that we have an empty weight center of gravity of 890 inches aft of the datum for the airplane, the datum being the reference point. And then we have given to us the mean aerodynamic chord locations of 456.7 and 1234.0. And we are to find the empty weight center of gravity as a percent of that mean aerodynamic chord. So I'm going to first label my rectangle with the bottom of the rectangle being a forward CG or forward location and the back of the rectangle, the top of the rectangle is labeled at 1,234 inches. So there's my different CG ranges for the mean aerodynamic chord. Next one I'm going to figure out is how, how long is the mean aerodynamic chord? How far is it between the two sides of my rectangular theoretical wing? And we can just do some simple math. We can subtract the uh, smaller number from the larger number, and we get that the MAC is 777.3 inches long. So taking that information, now I'm going to say, okay, our empty weight center of gravity is at 890 inches. So I'm going to basically estimate where along that line do we think that would approximately fall, 890 inches. I'm going to say it's probably 50 to 60 percent of the way along the line. So I'm going to mark that 890 inches along my MAC, along my mean aerodynamic chord. So there we are. We have an X marks the spot at 890 inches. And now we have to figure out what percent of our total mean aerodynamic chord length is 890 inches. Where does that really fall percentage wise on our mean aerodynamic chord? And to do that, I need to know how far it is from the empty weight center of gravity to the leading edge of my mean aerodynamic chord, to our LEMAC in uh, other aviation abbreviation lingo. So we're just going to do some math again. We can subtract um, 890. Uh, take 890 and subtract 456.7 from that, and I get 433. So 890 minus 456.7, I get 433 aft of the leading edge of my mean aerodynamic chord. And then I'm just going to take that 433 inches long uh, along my mean aerodynamic chord, divide it by the total length of my mean aerodynamic chord, which was 777.3, and I get 0 0.557. Now at this point, I'm glad because I have a decimal. I don't have anything larger than the number one. If it's larger than the number one, something is wrong with our calculation. Something's wrong with the math. So in this example, we are glad about this 0.557 because that says we're basically at 55.7% of the way along the mean aerodynamic chord. So uh, where I drew that is about right. So we're about halfway 
along, a little over halfway along the mean aerodynamic cord for our CG location. And oftentimes with larger aircraft, you're going to see a percent Mac needed to set the aircraft's trim setting to use in applications relating to the loading of the aircraft. So that's uh, why we would want to come up with a percent Mac expression for our aircraft's center of gravity location. Now let's look at another example. I've drawn another theoretical rectangular wing here. And in this example, we have a different set of information given. We have that our location of our mean aerodynamic cord is actually starting at LEMAC. So again, that's leading edge of mean aerodynamic cord. That's at 1,213 inches aft of our datum. The datum is that reference point that's determined by the aircraft manufacturer. So I'm going to go ahead and label that on my drawing here. I also have the fact that the length of our mean aerodynamic cord is given to us in this problem, we know that it's 312.7 inches long. So I've got my length of my mean aerodynamic cord. I've got the place where it starts, 12, 13 inches. I could take 12, 13, I could add 312.7 inches to that, and I could get my aft the top part of my rectangle, I could label that. I actually don't need it for this problem. Um, so we're not gonna we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna continue ahead because the other piece of information that we've got that's important is we have that our center of gravity is at 11.2% of the mean aerodynamic cord. And we have the total distance of our mean aerodynamic cord already, which is 312.7. So if I'm going to estimate about where that's going to lie on my line, it's only a little over 10% of the way along my mean aerodynamic cord. And so in order to figure out where that is, I can just multiply 0 0.0.112, that's 11.2%, multiply that by 312.7, and if I multiply that out, um, so you can see there I've marked where we're about a little over 10%, we're about 11% of the way along the mean aerodynamic cord for our empty weight center of gravity. If I do that multiplication, 312.7, the length of my mean aerodynamic cord, multiply by our empty weight center of gravity percentage, 0 0.112, and I get 35.02. Now be careful, the problem doesn't end there. So at this point, I know that from the distance of the beginning of my mean aerodynamic cord, or the LEMAC, leading edge mean aerodynamic cord, it's 35.02 inches. That's what this distance is here. You can see I've drawn a bracket between the beginning of the mean aerodynamic cord and our spot for our empty weight center of gravity. It's at 11.2%. And that distance we've just found is 35.02. But the problem asks us to find the empty weight center of gravity in inches from the datum. So if I look at my picture visually, this is the best way that I find to do these is draw them out. And I can see that from 12, 13 inches, that's the beginning of my mean aerodynamic cord. If I add to that my 35.02 inches, then I'm going to get my new center of gravity. I get my center of gravity location aft of the leading edge of mean aerodynamic cord by just adding. So 12, 13 inches plus 35.02 inches. And I have a location of our center of gravity as at 1,248 inches, 0 0.02. And that's our location of our, of our empty weight center of gravity when we just started with a percent of our mean aerodynamic cord. So thanks a lot for watching the video. I hope it helped you with some of your calculations with figuring out percent Mac and figuring out center of gravity for larger aircraft. If you like what you see, you can like uh, my channel or subscribe to my channel, like the video, um, and I have a lot of other content about airline transport pilot knowledge test preparations, dispatcher knowledge test, and uh, tours of various airlines that I've had the privilege of visiting. So thanks for watching.